Ooh, this one is really heavy. Hmm. Interesting one. It's a time for... Package from China. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome. Thanks for tuning in. So in this video, oh my guys, we need to talk to each other about this Pauki situation. Because when you're looking at the Pauki box, the Pauki pad, how you want to call this thing, what you're going to get is something like, yeah, in my opinion, a little bit of a lazy yeah, releasing kind of product thing. And the reason why, because nowadays, you're just going to get yourself a mini PC. Now you're wondering more like, what do you mean with that? So basically what they're doing is getting a mini PC, slapping hard drive in, and yeah, you need to do some tinkering with it, with the files or maybe with a controller. And in the end, you have like a pretty damn awesome system that you can play a lot of games with. But the question remains, what kind of games can we play? But if you're thinking it's a deja vu moment or it's just a glitch in the matrix or the YouTube matrix, no, nope, it is not. I already did a review about a similar product. It's not the same one like this one because there are a couple of different mini PCs out there. And what do we mean by that? Because this box looks the same like the one you did, let's say, a week ago. That's correct, but there is something different. So this model comes with the Intel Celeron G4000 125. And it has 8GB of RAM, 128GB of ROM. But overall, we're not going to use it like the ROM Eternal, but because we're going to use this thing like a beast. A beast of a game system. Yeah. Do you know, before we're going to talk about that, let's talk about first the controller. So for the people who have never seen this thing, so I'm just going to be honest, like the Bettop Bet2 wired controller is a pretty damn awesome one. So I've reviewed this thing separately and said it's more like the best casual controller you can get for your super console, for example. And the reason why, because this thing is absolutely awesome. Like they are cheap, comes with this very cool, awesome figure but that's not the point the point is that what i do like about this thing is the form factor it has some things that like with the playstation 4 controller the routings do i say it correctly rounding the roundings or like how it feels how sensual it is because it feels very nice it plays amazing it's got some nice joystick the d-pad mm -mm, i love myself some d-pads and this thing makes me really happy and exciting and the presses of the button feel very good so finally we're going to get ourselves a decent controller and they got rid of those freaking places to fake ones so this one comes with a wired version depending your different version out there because the saying uh, what how, but what do i mean with a different version yeah i will tell you why because we also have a wireless edition yeah you're not going to get one sometimes you give you the option to buy it but yeah guess what it's an option and sometimes they don't give a shit and they don't even offer it on the selling page but I just wanted to give you the heads up there is a wireless one and it's freaking awesome yeah baby but let's take a close look at the mini PC that has an Intel inside. So this is not AMD Ryzen based. That is something you can see maybe in the future with other brands or maybe also with this brand. You never know. But most of these mini PCs are just really good. And depending of course what kind of version, we're having the i5, i7, i3 series. But this is the one with the J series quad cores inside or better known as the Celerons. All right, so let's take a close look. We're having here the system itself. An extra manual with explanation, quick start guide. Over here, we're going to get, I am guessing, the power supply. Yep, it is. So let's take a close look at what kind of power supply we're going to get, because that's always the question. So this isn't just a basic 12 volt power supply. In here, we're going to get some extra goodies like mounting bracket, because you can put it behind a monitor if you want to. Of course, the needed screws for putting it on the monitor mount and that's it that's the only thing that we're going to get in the box let's take a close look at the system itself okay so time for the wicked nerdy time yeah because we're going to take a close look at the specifications the cpu is the g4125 intel celeron 2.7 gigahertz quad core the gpu is just a built-in hd 600 from intel 8 gigabytes of ddr4 the main storage is 128 gigabyte ssd the second one a 2 terabyte hard disk it is a 2.5 inch laptop drive of course two times hdmi one time vga and we're having windows 10 in combination with bodo Sierra linux but how is it with all of the connections and what can we do with it so on this side we're going to get a headphone jack out ethernet connection two times HDMI 
and then we're going to get the USB port over here, that's a 2.0 and over here we're going to get the input for the power supply. So at the front we're going to get the on off switch, we, if you have a DF slot, we're having three USB ports and over here what you can see, we're having the dongles that are like for the controllers that we're going to need. The device itself has been upgraded with a 2TB disk that will contain the Palosira software. He is using a 2TB CAGA disk for giving like excellent speed. It's not the fastest out there, but it's fast enough for using a piece of software combination with an emulation. Of course, you can always upgrade it with SSDs in the future if they are going to be more affordable. Because I think now, if you need to get yourself a 2TB SSD, they will go around 170, I think 180 euros. So there's a lot of money for a basic 2TB SSD upgrade. But I think it can be having a big effect on it for the loading times. And at the left side, we're going to get a VGA old school connection. And I would be, it would be really cool if you can use this machine in an old school CRT arcade machine. If it's compatible, that is up to the software. Okay, so but what's basically using this mini PC? It's just a quad core, a basic Celeron CPU from Intel. So even we have the option to play all of those awesome games, take considerations that we still will have some limitations. And that is what we're going to try out to find out today. What are we going to get when it comes to the limitations? And what can we play? I just want to point out that games like Tekken are super demanding, but it is still required some reconfiguration because you see the game will boot up, it runs really slow and there is no audio whatsoever. And this is not like that the emulator and in combination with the hardware can't run it, it's simply like a reconfiguration that is needed with the emulator itself. Okay, let's start off with MAME. Not a really demanding game. Okay, so next up, let's try Killer Instinct. Great example, it's the same like the Tekken games, super demanding, but this game seems to be running just fine as configured correctly. Oh, by the way, I really suck at this game. I have no idea what I'm doing here. But like Killer Instinct is a system that you can only run on a PC system like this. And Raspberry Pi 4 nowadays can also run it, but you need to overclock it like crazy. And with a PC, you don't need that. Next up, Nintendo GameCube will always be a very hard thing to emulate on a lower power device because even if it's a PC, it's a basic low power PC. But let's test out this game because it's a more demanding game like all the other ones. And most of the part it will run just fine. It runs on native resolution. If you want to upscale it, forget about it. And you can already see that it's having minor hiccups here and there. Next up, let's try the Wii. And with the Wii, you can see that it struggles. I've played this game a couple of times before and I noticed a lot of hiccups. And in my opinion, it makes this game unplayable. And this is the USA. Yeah! Okay, so let's see how the game runs on the PC edition. It also is very important what kind of emulator is running on the back end. So this one is running on the Mupin. And it runs way better than all the other ones I've tried before. But we got some more juice in combination with this. We can finally play some Cruise in the USA. And when I'm trying to play this game with the same kind of emulator on a Retro Station 40K or a Super Console X, I'm always going to have issues with it because it does have not enough juice to run it. Ooh. Ooh. And the more the gambling games like N64 with GoldenEye, if you could configure it correctly, we can play the game. I think I just shot him in the balls. But still, it has a minor hiccup here and there. 
Say hello to my little friend. Oof. All right, so with PlayStation Portable, I want to do the ultimate test, the God of War test, just to see how this runs. And you can already see from the start of this game that it works very well. You can display these things on a low-end system nowadays. Of course, if you're going to put it on a PC like this, we can have better resolutions, like full HD. Depending on what kind of CPU-GPU combination we're having, but we can just play Sega Dreamcast on the RetroStation PC perfectly without any issues. Next up, PlayStation 2, with a low-end system like this, some games will run just fine and Saul will be super slow. But sadly, this game is way too demanding, and this is what I mean with hit or miss. But here you can see that also Crest Bandicoot has some issues. It is slow crash bandicoot. A new way to play. Slow motion. For using this thing for a couple of hours, it is quite hot, but it includes a passive and active cooling. But let's open it up and just see how will this thing look in the inside and how is this thing built. Alright, so I've removed the four screws at the bottom and then we can lift up this compartment. This is just a compartment for the extra hard disk I've shown you before, the two terabyte. So that is what we're just going to leave in here. But let's take a close look at the mainboard itself. Over here we're going to get a very thick sticker that they have put on the mainboard and that is for protecting from the hard drive that is on top of it. It's not a very perfect <laughs> it's not a perfect con construction simply because we're going to have some heat transfer up to the mainboard itself. So if you replace this thing with an SSD, those things are not getting really hot nowadays. That would be more convenient in my opinion. So this is what we're going to get in the inside. So first of all, we're going to get two wires, one over there, and the other one goes at the bottom. And this is for the Wi-Fi capability, or better said, the antenna. Say the connection over here, then we're going to get the input for the power for the main board, but here we're having the internal storage. So if you change it out, it is possible, but you need to do a full teardown of the casing. The casing itself has been made, yeah, let's say, pure out of plastic mostly. There are not really like big metal parts in it for giving the main board some extra cooling. So the cooling itself, it is a gigantic ventilator. So this is more like this tunnel that sucks in the air from on the outside and blows it through the cooling block beneath it and blows it out over here. So the construction itself, it's not bad at all, but I wish we could see more, let's say metal part inside the casing. So that it gives this more like extra cooling. And if you ever need to replace this battery, that will happen, I think up in five up to 10 years. You need to do a same teardown like I did over here. Remove all the screws, lift it up very carefully for removing the battery or the BIOS battery. Okay guys, so this is what we're going to get with this mini PC or called the Pauki PC. And again, like you can just basically slap some own butter Sierra on this device. You can get those PCs way cheaper, but you need to do some tinkering and get yourself another controller maybe. So I like things you need to consider like what is the thing that you really love to do you want to get it cheap or you pay a little bit more and you're going to get a controller including a hard drive but let's talk about the pros and cons of this thing because it's still a very cheap like they're selling for a lot of money but it's still a very cheap mini pc with some low specs so there are some pros and cons involved with this so let's talk about that first so we are looking at a combination of all the boxes I've reviewed here on the channel. This is more like a mid-range mini PC. And you will see this in the performance, especially when you're looking at the high-end stuff. PlayStation 3, forget about it. Wii U, some games will run, but in general, forget about it. 
but it's more like up to PlayStation 1, but we can play some GameCube, some Wii games. But still, it's a very powerful machine and a lot of stuff like N64 that didn't run with the previous models, like with the normal retro station or super console X, you can play them now very good with this mini PC. It's a really awesome piece of the hardware, comes with really good controls. I was surprised to see how good these controllers actually are. Yeah, so this is what you're going to get. I want to thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And it will be great to see you in the next video. So consider subscribing and hit that little bell.